RX program mission, to deliver our arrows with precision from a position of safety and security to help cultivate the thirst for excellence in all aspects of the lives of those we teach. Hey guys, Rex here. We're doing comparative analysis on clarity and tracking. I got from cheapest to most expensive is my logic here. Uh, the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 is the lowest price scope at $339.99. Okay, those have been on the market for a few years. The brand new J series with Japanese glass is $399.99. The primary arms, 3 to 18 by 50. Their current uh, price on their website is $449.99. The Vortex Strike Eagle, 5 to 25 by 56. Current pricing on the, their website is $899.99. And IOR Valdatus, 2 to 16 by 42, 35 millimeter main tube. Current price on their website is $2,495, okay? So we have everything from a pretty budget priced option to a tier one priced option, okay? For the conditions, we had ambient lighting for the entire duration of the test period consistently overcast with the sky fully illuminated between 10.30 and 1.30 p.m., uh, the sun was 46 degrees above the horizon in an overcast setting, so the sky was fully illuminated, and we did a very, very good uh, comparison between all different optics and pretty much identical lighting conditions over the course of the day. So we had good ambient lighting this morning. Uh, we were able to get nice, consistent conditions between all the different optics without having bright sunlight coming through the front. We are shooting at a direction of almost 180 degrees due south at midday, okay? And with the ambient lighting, the consistency and the lux was almost perfect across the board for all different optics. Uh, we explain a little bit later, man, it is important if you're gonna do comparative analysis between different models to understand how the illumination, not only of the atmosphere, the ambient illumination of the atmosphere, but also the reflection of light off the ground of bright sunlight. Uh, like your, the color of the ground matters, the wetness of the ground, if the grass is gray or if it's snow covered or if you're shooting across the driveway or the time, the angle of the sun. If you have any inconsistencies in your lighting on an optics test, it's gonna be way the heck off, okay? I um, mean, I, I can notice that even from second by second. So at the very end of the test, um, we are just starting to clear up and we could see that when the sun came out, man, did it change it. It changed it dramatically. Um, how the, re the resolution, what you could read in the optic. And also, I mean, from having done this for years and years now, uh, will make a big difference on the angle of the sun reflecting off the ground into the optic. I've seen a lot of tests done in a very sloppy way uh, by guys that don't really understand the methods of materials. And that's fine. I mean, there's um, this all has to be reproducible. If you guys want the full uh, spiel on our methods of materials on how we do optics evaluations you can join us on patreon i have that on the patreon page because it's somewhat you know uh proprietary information um but it's it, it, man it is robust it's like a three or four hour freaking deal over there um if you put all the different videos together that we talk about how to do methods of materials i mean we've had a number of talks on that because that's that's the name of the game doesn't matter what numbers you got on your comparison if your methods and materials are not designed and your, your experimental design is not set up appropriately to make sure that you have, you know, minimized your variables. And with lighting, man, that is huge and it's difficult to execute outside unless you have tactical patience like I have. Because I waited weeks for the right morning to where it's not actually raining to get the lenses wet, but to where it's just nice overcast all morning we waited until the sun was overhead. We had enough window of time. Everything was prepared. And I was able to actually get good comparative analysis of clarity. Now, tracking tests are relatively easy to execute. You just put it on the board. You get everything adjusted and you just check the tracking. So a lot of these already knew the results on the tracking. Um, we did reconfirm those today just to get more numbers, right? Because who knows? Who knows? Maybe it changed over time, man. And again, for more on methods materials, for details on what exactly we're looking at here, what exactly we're looking at here <laughs> join us on patreon i explain thoroughly how we measure the light how we set up everything the direction of fire all that okay um a lot of work goes into this, these reviews way more work than i want to do so i cannot possibly bear to not tell you the reality i'm going to tell you the truth 100 percent on this i'm not going to lie 
Now, some of those, you know, it'd be more advantageous to me in, in many regards to bullshit you. It would, because there's like, oh, this new model came out. You all need to buy this new model now. Maybe. <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm just going to give you the numbers, okay? Um, and some of the stuff like, man, does my ego not want to report some of these numbers? Because some of the stuff I really like better than the other stuff too. Like some of my favorite stuff doesn't perform as good as the stuff I don't like as much, right? So here's the results, okay? Glass clarity. According to the Rosenbaum pocket screener card at 16 power magnification. Scored 1 through 10 via our methods and materials here on Rex Reviews. You can check that out on Patreon. We did a side-by-side -side test, consistent lighting conditions between all optics. The Arkin SH4 Gen 2 6 to 24 came in at 5.8 on the Rosenbaum test. The Arkin SH4 J series came in at 5.6. The primary arms 3 to 18 by 50 came in at 5.2. The Vortex Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56 first focal plane came in at 5.6 matching the Arkin SH4 uh, J series. And the IOR Valdata 2 to 16 came in at five. If you want a picture of what I'm doing, you can go to Patreon and I'll show you what I'm doing on some of these tests where we do comparative analysis between a variety of other optics. I do some pretty good reviews over there on like, you know, comparing the different optics in, in excruciating detail. So just so you know, when I'm speaking here on YouTube, there's a lot of background information and I speak with the authority of reality. Okay? This is all quantifiable. This is not my opinion on which scope seems more clear or which one should be more clear based on its price point. This is not any of that. This is me simply giving you a quantifiable, quantifiable number, and that's all there is to it. Okay? So on the Rosenbaum, and we had pretty consistent results. The reason we have two different reading tests, the Rosenbaum presents to you numbers and letters. Okay? They present to you numbers and letters in a different way that the Air Force resolution test will give you cycles per millimeter, which is probably in terms of, you know, comparing a variety of different kinds of equipment, the easier way to do that. That's why the Air Force test is great. But I wanted to also do the Rosenbaum because can you discern recognizable symbols, not just cycles per millimeter, but can you discern and you get a little bit different angle um, on different optics sometimes. Stuff will do a little better on one versus the other because it's um, there, there's a difference on how the human picks it up. Glass clarity according to the United States Air Force 1951 direct read resolution target, the T21 is labeled in cycles per millimeter according to mill standard 150 alpha. Side-by-side -side test, consistent lighting conditions. The Arkin SH4s both came in at 1.3. The primary arms, 3 to 18 by 50, came in at 1.25. The Vortex Strike Eagle came in at 1.3. And the Iwar Valdata 2 to 16 came in at about 1.25, 1.24. All of these optics, I selected a magnification range in which they would be consistent across the board. Because if one only goes up to 16 power and the other one goes up to 25 power, that's not really testing the clarity of the glass uh, across the board, right? So I'm, t I'm checking the clarity of the glass at a uniform magnification range across all five different models, okay? And so I selected 16 power to be our main test here. And I also checked the max power um, for these other optics as well, just to see, okay, like if you could utilize all the stuff within your scope, um, would you be able to see more clearly at max power? And, and as we determined in this testing, I was a not able to see any higher resolution in terms of the Rosenbaum or the T21 test, when I cranked the scopes up to their maximum power, it did not increase my ability or the clarity. Uh, it did not change the numbers at all. It was exactly the same at 24 power, 25 power, and all the way down to 16 power. So that tells us the 16 power is well within the range to discern whether or not um, certain things are readable here, okay? The Vortex Strike Eagle was also at 5.6, identical to the Arkin SH4 and SH4J. 
That is a quantifiable number here. I mean, like, that's not an opinion. So the Strike Eagle, you can look at his price point, and you can look at the Arc, and they're identical in glass clarity with the identical lighting conditions. You know, there's so many things they can throw off your test when you're doing comparative analysis. The reason why sometimes you might see different results on the internet is because guys got sloppy methods and materials. So I'm doing comparative analysis with all the controls established here and the ARC and SH4. There's a reason I've been kind of taught, I've been pointing at that scope for the last couple of years. Not because it's my favorite. It's actually not my favorite. My favorite is Schmidt and Bender and Steiner and Iowar Valdata. Those are my old school favorites. Like if I had to attach my emotions onto an optic, it would be those. But the reality is, they're identical. Now, here's the part I don't want to tell you, the IOR uh, 2 to 16. Man, it, it looks that the color rendition is better. The um, over, and when I talk about that, you get, that's a technical term. That's not talking about the color and how it looks or anything like that. We're talking about the clarity of Apple chromatically corrected glass where at least three different densities of glass are going to accommodate for three different parts of the visible light spectrum and bring them into perfect focus. You have a very, very beautiful view out of the IOR Valdata, but when it came to the Rosenbaum test to actually read numbers on a page, it was at 5.1. I'm almost where the PA was. Now that's a, 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 an optic that is a lot more expensive and it does look nicer when you're, now when you're looking through it, if I wasn't gonna do a quantifiable test, the Iowa Valdetta is hands and shoulders above all the rest of these in terms of clarity. Um, the one thing that the um, Iowa did way better on the other ones was in glare. There was zero scope glare out of the Iowa Valdetta. The other ones all had a decent amount of scope glare especially when the sun came out. And when I was doing some testing last week, uh, pointed almost directly at a setting sun, like about 15 degrees off. And the IOR Valdata did great in those conditions and in low light conditions as well. Um, that's where a lot of these are going to uh, show a lot better than others. Now, I'm not, some of that I didn't film last week because like it's hard to set up a camera in the freaking dark. You're not going to see anything anyways. It's just going to be blurry trying to manage the camera and also get a reading as the sun is going down in low light because it's continuously dropping in lux. And if you're measuring the numbers in lux as it's continuously getting dimmer and dimmer, you have a very short window in time. You cannot run a camera if you want. You know, otherwise, the first optic is going to be bright out and the second optic or the last opti optic is going to be completely dark if you're screwing around with the camera, right? So I did uh, most of those tests earlier. And what we're going to see is that the IOR Valdata did very, very good. Um, but these numbers are, are pretty representative of most operating conditions here. Um, again, the color rendition is better. The, the scope, uh, the lens coatings are definitely better. One thing I did notice on the J was that um, there's a little bit more glare than on the old model. Um, it seemed that way, okay? So it just seemed like there's a little bit more scope glare in the Japanese glass than the old model, okay? Okay. Now, do I want to report that to you? No, because I want you to also buy the J model too, which you probably should, because we all need to support the Japanese optics industry and the Japanese in terms of the glass production, right? The optic is not all the way made in Japan, but the glass is made in Japan. And so we need to support that. Otherwise, we're going to be bowing down <laughs> to our enemies forever, right? So absolutely buy the J series. Um, but like the optics coating is not quite as good as some of the others but man the arkins are just kicking butt they're right up there with a thousand dollar scope man and i'll leave a link below if you guys use by the way the link that i got below for this deal here is just rex code rex if you use just code rex i told them to absolutely match their best deal okay so whatever their best deal is whether that be the, the discount, a percentage discount, or if there's some other uh, package deal going on or whatever, they will match the best deal that exists on the internet, okay? That's what I can continuously told them to give uh, to me so I can hand it to you so that it's simple because it's hard shopping through who has the best percentage discount to do the math. So uh, they agreed to go ahead and just make REX, code REX will give you the best discount on all of them, okay? So there's that. Now let's look at tracking. Tracking precision.
So the error percentage, the tracking graduation precision test, we tested the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 at less than a quarter percent error in the tracking. The Arkin SH4J, Japanese glass, Gen 2, was less than a quarter percent tracking error. The primary arms, 3 to 18 by 50, exhibited a 3% error in tracking. The Vortex Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56 first focal plane was also at about 3% tracking error. The IOR Veldata 2 to 16 by 42 35 millimeter was 1.75% tracking error. We tested them across the center of the adjustment range, so not off on one edge or the other, but across the center of the adjustment range. We put them all on zero, and then we basically started from the center and then went 10 mils. All right, let's just read it here. So the one with the most percent error actually is the PA3 to 18, 3% um, error on the tracking on that, 97% accuracy, which is pretty normal for a, a over-the-counter, you know, affordable scope. Um, I've seen worse than that, um, you know, with all the hundreds and hundreds of different optics, to optics we tested over the years. Uh, but 3% is pretty normal for a scope in that price range. So guys ask, well, what percentage of tr uh, tracking precision is appropriate, Rex, in a price range? Well, 3%, three, 3%, 2 or 3% is industry standard. So they're uh, right at about industry standard there. The, what's the next one here? The Strike Eagle Vortex was 3%. So the PA, 3 to 18, was matching the Strike Eagle from... Vortex, the 5 to 25 strike you go, had the same tracking as the PA 3 to 18 with a 97% uh, tracking graduation precision. And I verified many times, and I've done this for years. I can tell you that that's consistent with what I've seen, okay? Um, there's a reason, again, I point towards certain stuff and I point less towards other stuff. There's a reason. I don't want to be mean, but I'll just read you the numbers. The numbers can be mean. You go reproduce the test. Tell me what you find, okay? Okay. That's the numbers I got. So the PA 3 to 18, which is way cheaper than the Strike Eagle um, and with less, you know, precision features on it, you know, uh, frankly, like kept almost identical tracking, okay? The IOR Veldata was the next one in tracking precision. And that was, where's my IOR numbers here? 1.75% error. And these are short, so they didn't quite make 10 mils. Um, all of them are short. Um, so the IOR is about twice as good in tracking as the, the Strike Eagle and the primary arms. So that's a 98, what would that be? 98.25%, right? Precision. So 1.25 or 1.75% short. And again, the SH4 and the SH4J were both less than a quarter of a percent in error. In fact, it was so close to 100%. I just don't like calling stuff 100% because, like, there w it was a tiny bit short. So when you're subdividing the line that I'm looking at, I can discern within a quarter percent. And it's just barely. It's probably less than 0.25, uh, but I can say for sure that it's in between 0.25% error and 100% accurate. So... That'd be 99.75% accurate or 100% accurate. Somewhere in there, probably like if I had to guess, and I hate guessing between there, because what I can quantify is the closest quarter of a percent. Um, we're probably sitting at 99.9, 99.8% tracking precision. And again, methods of materials, if you don't know what you're doing when you're running a test like that, it's going to be way off. So I've seen a lot of different reviews. I'm not going to be mean, but like, um, there are some guys that do a really good job, like uh, Sniper's Hide does a great job. Frank Galley knows what he's doing. Um, there's a few other outfits like that. Like if you ask guys like Carl from Tactical Rifleman, those guys are very experienced. They absolutely know what they're doing. But like I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of guys just go out there and do a tracking test and they did not freaking do it right. Like the, your eye has to be centered behind there. The parallax has to be eliminated as much as possible. Okay, and then your eye has to be perfectly centered behind the scope. You have to reproduce it, come back to zero at least three times. I, I'm OCD on it. Until I get the same exact uh, answer in a row, I will go like, I want to get like, you know, I want to get like three exact numbers in a row. 
before I'm satisfied that I'm returning to zero. And they'll all fall within that um, pretty consistent range. So I can say with authority that the Arkin SH4 and SH4J are both almost 100%. So I would call 99.75% on. So when you do <laughs> all the rest of your um, analysis, you can definitely know. Um, I'll just show you the numbers here. You can see um, price per you know value. Um, I'll put this up in some graphs for you to visually represent it. Um, again, I do not want to lead you guys astray because I know that one day, just like my old compadre, James Yeager said, here's the deal, man. You don't want to tell people the wrong shit because one day they're going to meet you in a class and their stuff is not going to work and they're going to put it in your face and be like, you told me this thing was going to be accurate and it's not. So I have the accountability and pressure of multiple extremely honest mentors and thousands of students, precision rifle students, that are going to keep me honest on this because I show them how to do this, okay? So it's not some bullshit review with some kind of ulterior motive. I'm just telling you the numbers, okay? Because all the stuff is re reproducible. It is what it is. Facts, not feelings. Numbers don't lie. Um, and hopefully you found this useful, Rock and roll. You guys have a good day. If you do um, use the code, of course, it supports the channel. I appreciate that. I only link up and have those relationships with the outfits that I feel are totally worthy of me pointing at them. Um, so I find the best deals that I can find, and those are the ones I promote because I want my guys that do the training at our classes to have the, the best experience and, and the best capabilities with all their different stuff that they're going to use. I'd, plus... The other thing why I have to tell you the truth and why I am somewhat direct on my endorsements is like, if your stuff is not working properly in the range, do you know how much freaking work that is to identify a subtle problem like that? You know how much work it is if, if I just allowed everyone to have sloppy optics on the range? Like, then I have to worry about that. I need to worry about marksmanship and methodology for dialing the firing solution and all your field stuff that you're doing. Um, when you're doing your long range precision shooting classes. So I don't have, I frankly don't have time to mess around with stuff that don't work. I despise stuff that doesn't work as advertised. So that's another reason why I push it. But of course they do support the channel and I, uh, I appreciate your support as well. Thank you. If you found this to be valuable, please leave a thumbs up and all that stuff below. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Take it easy. Hey.